Good morning. Brothers and sisters, welcome to St. Peter A.M. Zion Church. I am Patrick Freeman, Pastor Patrick Freeman. We bring a message today. Thank God for this Sunday. We're grateful that He has been good to us. He watched over us all week long. And for that, we should give Him all the praise and all the glory for what He has done. Uh, let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, thank you once again for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for who you are and all the things that you have done for us. Thank you for the lying down last night and rising up this morning in our right mind. Lord, we thank you for, for being able to come and worship you in spirit and in truth. We lift you up higher and higher for you said that if you be lifted up, you draw men unto thee. So we're grateful, Father, to lift you up. We're grateful for all the wonderful things. Now, Father, we ask that you will crucify the flesh this morning. We ask, Lord, that we will let your Holy Spirit reign this morning. We ask, Father, that it will move forward, Father, like it did uh, in Pentecost. Now, Father, we ask, Lord, that you give us a word, Father, from you that may go forth to your people and it will, we will apply it to our daily lives. Father, we love you because you first loved us. And in Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen. Amen. And once again, to, this morning I would like to take a text, a scripture from Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Verses 1 through 6. Ephesians 1, 1 through 6. We thank God for his holy word. He said his word is quick and powerful, sharper than the two-edged sword. Ephesians chapter 1. Salutation from Paul. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us unto the adoption of the children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us acceptable in the beloved. Amen. You allow me to encourage you this morning on the word from God that you were chosen by God, that you were chosen by God. I can just imagine at Ephesus, where the church at Ephesus, where Paul had to remind some Christians that they had been chosen. Uh, and each book in the Bible, it has its own special theme and message, even though it may deal with many different topics. Genesis, we find, is the book of the beginning. Matthew, we find, is the book of the kingdom. Galatians, uh, the book of liberty. But Ephesians 1, when we look at the Bible here, it states that uh, it has a theme, the Christian riches in Christ. Paul, a great theologian, Paul begins this letter with an introduction of a praise to God uh, for who he is and what he has done. When we come to understand that we're chosen in Jesus Christ before the foundation of the world, that alone, brothers and sisters, do much for our self-worth and our self-esteem. When you stop uh, looking for love in the wrong places, you'll stop looking for acceptance and stop trying to feel guilty about every day and, and, and bad about who you are. You have been accepted in the beloved in Jesus Christ. Verse 6 tells us to praise God. Uh, of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. 
I want to look up chosen when we uh, talk about we've been chosen. Uh, it means having been selected as the best or most appropriate. When we look at chosen, our word of God, God chose us. He, he chose the best and he chose the uh, most appropriate to be with him. In the end, verse, verse 4 in, in, in this same chapter, it said, According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. We have to thank God for choosing us before the foundation of the world. Thank Jesus that we have been accepted even before the foundation of the world. Thank God that we're chosen. He says he chose us. We did not choose him. He chose us. This this choosing was God's own decision, brothers and sisters. Let me encourage you uh, this morning, St. Peter's, and all those that are listening, that no one who is saved can say that they're saved because they chose God. And his salvation and your salvation, my salvation, is in the response to God choosing us. And we look at verse 3, it, it tells us about the blessings that we enjoy as the children of God. Uh, uh, as far as uh, we're wealthier, we're far wealthier in Christ than we can ever grasp this this, this afternoon, folks. And, and in chapter three, it said, "Bless." When we find "bless," we find it three times in verse three. It said, "Bless be the God of our Father." God wants to bless us, and then it said, "Who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings." God wants to bless you. He wants to bless us in the beloved. He, he, he tells us about his blessings that we can enjoy as children of God. And, and brothers and sisters, that, that, that needs investigation whenever you see a word three times in succession. It's worthy of our investigation. He said, blessed be the God of our Father, Jesus Christ, who that gave us spiritual blessings. All spiritual blessings... Uh, heavenly realms in Jesus Christ. And let, let's look at uh, the first point here. I, I only got three. First one, it says that the source of our blessings. Christ is the source of our blessings. It, it is the Father who's the giver, and the Son who is the give, and the Holy Spirit is the guarantee. And we have this Trinitarian formula just in the first line of, of, of verse 3. God the Father gave, God the Son was the gift, and the Holy Spirit who is God and the Son one person and three personalities it comes to seal what the Father gave and what the Son redeems. Uh, to, just stay with me for a moment because, because when Paul says blessed be God, he's praising God as a free will offering. Most of the things we do, folks, most of the things, brothers and sisters, we do in the Christian faith, we do because we have been commanded to do. God has commanded us to attend worship. I know uh, we, we can't gather together right now, but we're gathering social media. He's commanded us to, to worship together. He's commanded us to tithe. He commanded us to, to witness. He commanded us to pray. And all of these things uh, I mentioned, God has commanded us to obey. When we offer praise, when we offer God praise, we don't do it because he commands us. We do it because we love him. Folks, if we love God, uh, we'll keep his commandments. If we love God, we'll do as he say do. If, if, if you love God and obey God, we do it because we love him. Not for what he can give, but for what he for, for what he is. And when you love God for who he is and not for what he can give, no praise leader will have to tell you to give God a hand clap of praise. Don't nobody have to boast you or, or lift you up when you love God. He has chosen us. You are chosen because he loves you. And when you love God who he is, you can give him a hand clap of praise. If you love him for who he is, nobody have to manage your praise. Nobody have to tell you how to praise him. When you start thinking about the doors that God has opened for you, when you start thinking about the prayers that God has answered for you, when you start thinking about the ways that God has made for you, when you start just thinking about all the things that he, he's doing for you, you got a right to praise him. The psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Not just on Sunday mornings, not just on Wednesday nights, not, not just when you get a raise on your job, not just when everything is going well with your health. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise should continually be in my mouth. Uh, but church, if you don't magnify the Lord with me, 
then somebody has to do it. And if you can't magnify the Lord with the pastor, if you can't magnify the Lord with your fellow members, you, you have to do it by yourself. Let us exalt his name together. But church, if you don't exalt the Lord with me, I, I'm going to have to do it. If we exalt his name together, because we got so much that he has done for us, and he tells us in, in, in Ephesians that we are chosen by him. The source of our blessings come from God. Every good and perfect gift come from God. And God is always blessing us. Blessed be the God of Jesus Christ. I have two more points. I have one. My, my second point is Jesus and God is the subject of the blessing. Who are those blessings geared toward? Paul said that God has blessed us and he has blessed the church. He has, he has blessed you. He has blessed your family. God even has blessed us during this COVID-19, during this pandemic. God has blessed uh, the presiding elder. God has blessed our, our brother, uh, uh, Benny Smith. God has blessed all the members at St. Peter. God has blessed Reba and so on. God has blessed you and you are alive this morning, not because you have been dying and working out. You're alive this morning, not because you've been reading scripture and praying every day. You're alive this morning because God has blessed us to be here. And if you know that you, you have been blessed beyond what you deserve, you ought to tell somebody that you are blessed. We're worshiping uh, God this morning, not because we're so holy. Because God has been good to us. God has blessed us. We need to uh, uh, tell the Lord to continue to enlarge our territory. Tell the Lord to continue to bless you with good health. Tell the Lord to continue to bless you in your finances. Tell the Lord to uh, continue to bless you in your going in and your coming out. You know, tell the Lord to continue to bless you in the city. Bless you in your field. Tell the Lord to continue to bless you when you lay down at night and when you rise up in the morning. Tell him to bless your children when they're asking from your prayers. Ask the Lord to bless your family, bless your brothers, and bless your sisters, and nieces, and nephews, bless your co-workers, and, and, and bless your church family. We need the Lord every hour, and I'm so glad that he had chosen us to be his children. The subject of the blessing is us. Uh, brothers and sisters, the, the, uh, listen, the, 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 the recipients of God's blessing are those he saved by grace. The, the gift was complete before the recipients were uh, created to receive it. He, he said before the foundation of the world that when we should be holy and without blemish, before the foundation of the world, he loved us. Before he created us, he loved us. Before he, he knew, before he created us, let, let me try and make it plain, brothers. So see, it, it, you know, I expect a miracle. I'm always carrying with me expectations. Uh, when parents are expecting a newborn baby, they begin to uh, go buy cribs. And if it's a boy, they begin to buy blue stuff. If it's a, if it's a girl, they begin to buy pink things. And uh, they begin to make preparations. And when they find out uh, what it is, they increase the the gifts for the boy or for the girl. Uh, they buy pampers and wipes and clothes and, and, and sleepers and shoes and then they decide what they're going to name the baby. The baby hadn't made it into the world yet, but the parents carry on like the baby is already in the crib. And church, your blessings might not have come yet, but you should uh, carry on like it already have. We may not have it in our hands, but we should walk like we have it. For we may not have a lot of money, but we should act like we have it. We, we may be down sometimes, but we should walk like we're blessed. We should talk like we're blessed. We should shout like we're blessed. We should live like we're blessed. The signature was put on the deed when Christ was born, church, and the seal was added when Christ died. I'm almost closing. And, and the promise was delivered when Christ rose on Sunday morning. Our blessing to God are the words we say. God's blessing to us are the deeds he performed. The word blessed suggests that God always have good thoughts toward his children. Those of us who are parents and our children are always on our mind. I don't care how old they are. I don't care how grown they are. They can be finished in 
elementary, they can be graduating from high school, they can be graduating from college, and when we parents still continue to pray and say wherever they are, Lord, keep your hand of protection on them. I've raised them the best way I know how. Lord, my, I, I, I protect them when they get out. And the Word of God tells us to train them while they're young so when they get older, they will not uh, depart from thee. Because every time Folks, we think about our children. We want God to protect them. My last point here, finally, the storehouse of the blessings. Verse 3 says, Blessed be the God of, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. In order to get the gift, brothers and sisters, in order to get the gifts, ladies and gentlemen, men and women, in order to get what God has for you, you have to go up. Colossians 3 and 3 says, set your affections on the things above and not things on earth. Philippians 4 and 8 said, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if they be in the virtue, if they be in the praise, think on these things, and the peace of God shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, we belong to God when he's the source and you are the subject. And the scope has been handed out, and God gives you what he wants you to have from the storehouse. We know that all things work together for the good and those who are called to his purpose. We know that it, 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 you won't grow weary in doing good. We will reap if we faint not. We know that if you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you desires of your heart. We know that when your enemy is trying to pull you down, we know that he prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies and he anoints your head with oil. You have spiritual blessings, brothers and sisters, but they have to be in Christ. You can't get the gifts unless you're the giver. You can't get God's blessings unless you have God's Son, Jesus Christ. Too many of us want to enjoy God's blessings, but we don't want to do God's business. Too many of us want God to continue to pour out and pour out, but we don't want to do what he says. Church, you, you can't have the blessings of Christ unless you have Christ himself. Because the gifts come along with the giver. The blessings come along with the blesser. That's why we can praise God for his gifts because we know he's the giver. Don't you know? Don't, don't you know? He, 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 Jesus said, uh, according to Paul, he's telling us that he wants us to be blessed. And we know we are. I'm closing now. Uh, don't you know him? I know him. We know Christ wants us to have the best uh, Christ wants us to bless us with the things that we need and not what we want. Christ has chosen us to be his vessel. Christ has chosen us to go out and tell other people that, that, that he still lives. Christ has uh, uh, allowed us, he has chosen us uh, to, to continue to allow the light shine through us. And we should know who he is. And he died for us first. He died for the church. And we, we, we know he, he died, but he didn't stay dead. He rose. He got up. Uh, before breakfast, he got up with all power in his hand. He got up. Uh, and he's able to, 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 to do these things. He got up for us, Father. He, it's, it's like he has hope to the heart. He, he's able to bring uh, comfort in the midst of our calamity. He's able to provide peace in the midst of a storm. You know him, don't you? He's able to grant uh, you grace uh, when your heart, he wants you to be blessed. He's able to hurt, uh, heal your hurts and calm your fears, brothers. He wants you to be blessed. He's able to provide peace in the midst of your storm. He has chosen you to be blessed. He's able to grant you peace uh, and, and, and continue to uh, 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 heal your heart. He wants you to be blessed. He's able uh, to wipe your tears from your leaking eyes. He wants you to be blessed. He has chosen you to be blessed. He's able to make ways out of no ways. He has chosen you to be blessed. He's able, even in this hour, he's able to pick you up and turn your life around. He wants you to be blessed. He's able to heal your heart. He's chosen you to be blessed. He's too wise to make mistakes. He's chosen you to be blessed. He's too just to be wrong. He has chosen you to be blessed. He's too good to be bad. He has chosen you to be blessed. He's too loving to be hateful. He has chosen you to be blessed. He's too caring to be unconcerned.
concern. He has chosen you to be blessed. He's too strong to be weak. He has chosen you to be blessed. He's too time to be too late. He has chosen you to be blessed. He's too quick to be slow. He has chosen you to be blessed. He's too powerful to be powerless. He has chosen you to be blessed. He's too true to be false. He has chosen you to be blessed. And he chose you to be his children. And he be your God. You were chosen by God to be blessed. That's the message for this morning. Chosen by God to be blessed. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, thank you once again for your word in Ephesians. Allowing us to know, Father, that you chose us even before the foundation. Not only did you chose us, you chose us to be blessed. So right now, Father, I lift this prayer up to you. Uh, for all the members of St. Peter's, I lift this prayer for our presiding elder. I lift this prayer for our bishop. And everyone that's watching all across the world, you have chosen us to be blessed. Now, Father, I pray, Lord, for anyone that needs you right now. I pray that there's someone that somewhere, Lord, that's calling on your name, we extend the invitation, Father, that whatever they are, Father, that you will hear their prayer. Father, we pray for those, Lord, that are still walking, Lord, that don't have a relationship with you. Lord, that you will allow some time to get a relationship. Lord, we pray for those, Lord, that are walking the streets with no place to lie uh, their head in. That, Lord, you would show them the way. That you would bless them with shelter. We pray for those, Lord, that don't know where their next meal is coming from. Lord, that you would bless them with a meal. Now, Father, we pray, Lord, that as we move about this week, Lord, that you would guide each and every one of us, each and every member, Father, each and every extended family, God, our hearts, our minds, our spirits. And Father, we pray, Lord, that you will help us to say the things that you want us to say. Order our steps in Jesus' name. Lord, and we pray that we would do things that are pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Now, Father, may you continue to choose us and use us to show the world that you still live. In Jesus' name we ask you. Amen. Thank you again for worshiping up with us today. May God bless you.